All right, so we're still looking at uh, constant coefficient homogeneous systems where the coefficient matrix is invertible. And we just looked at the case for um, distinct real roots. Now let's look at the case for um, repeated root. So in the case of a repeated real root, um, then either one of two things happens. So it can be the case that the uh, coefficient matrix is a scalar of the identity matrix, so something that looks like, you know, 7, 7, or something like that. In this case, um, it turns out that paths all just look like lines through the origin. And uh, so I've done, uh, so with 7 as a positive number, everything would be going outward, and that's what trajectory, any trajectory that you choose anywhere will just look like some straight line. So if you start here, it'll just go outward directly away from, from the origin. Um, <clears throat> if uh, these were to be negative sevens, then of course all the arrows uh, would be reversed and all paths would go in toward the origin. So that's one thing that can happen. So that would be a uh, stable or unstable node, proper node, uh, depending on which case you're in, positive or negative. The other thing, though, that can happen is that um, if it's not a scalar multiple of the identity, then it necessarily turns out that the matrix is going to be defective. And in this case, let's see, so if we go back to um, looking at our uh, eigenspaces for, well, we only get one V1, right? If it's defective, we only get one um, real eigenvector, and uh, but maybe we have a de uh, degenerate eigenvector, and it looks like uh, this. So here's our eta. Okay, so then in the case when, uh, say, the eigenvalue corresponding to um, uh, is, is negative, then this one's going to want to go in this way. And it turns out that um, the trajectories are going to come like this, whoops, and then curve around and swoop in from, from the other side there. Let me just switch colors on this. Uh, I'm sticking with green for trajectories. Okay. Um, so yeah, so in the beginning, things are looking uh, parallel to minus V. And then at the end, they come in and they go to the origin tangent, actually, to V. And this is going to be the same on, on either side. So this is what we have going on for our behavior around, around one of these. And so this is called a degenerate node. And this would be an example of, um, of a stable one. With, with lambda, our, our repeated eigenvalue being negative. Um, of course, if it were uh, reversed with it being positive, then that would be unstable. That would be for the case when lambda's positive. Um, and then if you're wondering about uh, how to determine uh, which, which way the, the spiral is going, if it were the other way around, so that we had um, our eigenvector here and then our degenerate eigenvector down here, then we would be uh, passing through uh, in, the, in the other direction, like that. Um, okay. And then the last thing that we have to consider is uh, the case of complex conjugate roots. So this is when lambda looks like alpha plus or minus i beta. And this is, this is the case when we get rotation. And so if um, we have, uh, let's see, say we've got lambda positive, then in this case you're going to have 
trajectories that come out like this. So you're going to have a, whoa, that one was a little berserk. Uh, so this is going to be called, for obvious reasons, a spiral point. And if we had something where uh, lambda was negative, it would also be a spiral point, but uh, things would just be, oh, sorry, not, not, la ah, I said lambda. What am I talking about? I'm sorry. Let me go back and fix this. Is, this is where alpha is positive and where alpha is negative. So remember, these solutions correspond to something that looks like e to the alpha t uh, times your trigonometric stuff, right? And so it's it's the sign of the alpha part that determines whether you're going to be uh, attracting or repelling. So in this case, uh, when it's negative, they would all be spiraling uh, inward toward the origin like this, and this would be uh, an attracting fixed point, or an attracting equilibrium point. Okay, uh, and then you might have the question, um, how do you know whether it's going uh, counterclockwise or clockwise? And the way to figure that out uh, is to just look at um, uh, the equation. So if we have x one or x prime y prime, and this is uh, a b c d times uh, x y, so I, I'm just just writing out the uh, the entries or the coordinates for our our whoop, matrix system here. Um, so then say, let's, let's look at what happens at some point, um, like say, uh, let's take this one right here. So this, this is the point uh, zero, 01. Okay, so if we look at zero, 01 here, then we've got um, uh, x prime, whoops, y prime, at the point where we're passing through zero, 01 is going to be given by this matrix times 0, 1, which is going to give us uh, B, D. So now that says, okay, well, um, everything's going to be determined then by the relative signs and sizes of, of B and D. So if we had something where, say, um, B and D are negative, then that's telling you that um, as you pass through this point right here, um, let's see, so B negative means you're x derivative is going to be uh, you're going that way, and d negative means that your y derivative is going to be going that way. And so as a consequence, uh, put these together, you're going to be headed that way as you pass through this point. Okay, so what does that mean? So that means you're going to be spiraling in like this, right? And uh, here, I'll do some more examples, but first let's look at the other thing that can happen. The other thing that can happen is that alpha can be equal to zero, right? And in the case when alpha is equal to zero, then you've got something that's a purely trigonometric uh, solution. There is no exponential. And so then in that case, um, you're gonna be looking at something that looks like this. Oops. All right, so your, your trajectories are going to look something like, like these ones. And again, the question is, um, how do you determine if it's, you know, tilted to the left or to the right or straight, or if it's, uh, you know, if the rotation is going clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever. So what I've drawn here is a picture, again, for when B and D are negative, because as we, we go through this point right here, uh, B is negative and D is negative, so the joint effect is to go that way. Now, if you had some other um, possibility, like say B is negative, uh, D is positive, then as you go through this point here, um, B 
is negative, but D is positive, so you're going to be going upward, and that means you're going to be rotating something like this. Um, if you look at, and <clears throat> I just picked this particular point zero one. maybe you like finding out what happens going through one zero, in which case you're going to be looking at the signs of A and C. Uh, it doesn't matter, anything's fine. Um, if we look at where B is positive and D is negative, then, uh, let's see, so as we go through here, we have uh, B is positive, D is negative, so we're going to be doing something like this. Um, if you had something where, say, um, B is positive, D is equal to zero, then, uh, let's see, so B is, um, positive and d is equal to zero, so then you're going to have something that looks like this, and it'll just be oriented uh, horizontally, not, not slanted per se. And if you have something where b is equal to zero, then you're not getting complex roots and you wouldn't be in this position.